Hello and welcome to Tools in the Shed. It's a podcast powered by Cars Guide, ready to rip into car stuff that has caught our eye this week. I'm James and with me is Richard <laughs> and Tom. <laughs> Hello. This week, we're investigating a Korean car giant determined to win over Aussie tradies. And we'll be discussing significant cars that have passed through the Cars Guide garage this week. Although Tom was in our Japanese annex, so Mm. that's a special event in and of itself. And we'll catch up with someone who's set to become even more billionaire in this week's Muskwatch. So, stay with us. We've had some feedback. And um, for the first time, we've had so much feedback that um, I've had to cherry pick a few. Sorry for those that we didn't get to, but uh, we had lots of viewers, lots of listeners, and John Appswood said, a petrol hybrid uh, Land Cruiser sounds like the Land Cruiser is heading the way of the Holden Commodore, dead and buried. For a company that says, don't miss with the Land Cruiser, they are messing with it big time. Uh, a 3.5 petrol hybrid, and I've got to insert there, sorry, word is it's a 3.6, and thanks for calling us out on that, MOS, Motor Vehicle Obsession Solutions, who said <laughs> we'd actually call it a 3.6 in the words, and then we call it a 3.5. Not anyway, thank you. Um, it's not mm. going to cut it with 3.5 tonnes on the tow ball and hauling up steep grades. The hybrid will only last around 20 kilometres, then you're chewing heaps of unleaded at some ridiculous price per litre. Look at the Nissan Patrol. Sales dropped like a lead balloon when they dropped the diesel. I have a 200 diesel, and if Toyota deletes the V8 diesel, people will go to F-Trucks, GMC, and Rams, and I will be one of them. It's an interesting comment because Toyota went to uh, lengths to keep the 70 Series having that V8 engine just for our market. Four and a half litre V8. D8. Diesel. Diesel. A diesel V8. A a diesel, (laughs) yeah, Anyway, Toyota went to the lengths to uh, get that car to basically pass compliance for our market so that it could be on fleets. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if maybe they extended its life even further sure. just for us again. This is a massive, massive risk for Toyota. Yeah. But they, having interviewed Sean Hanley um, a couple of months ago, he's the you know, the VP of... Sales, sales and marketing mm, trunk chief. Event. That's yeah. right. Um, he actually said... It's, that they would, there's no way that they would release, uh, uh, you know, a new generation Land Cruiser if it wasn't, you know, as capable as the previous generation. And he's acutely aware of how loyal the fan base is. Mm, and he yeah. said, it, any anything that gets written in the media about a Land Cruiser, he gets m- like mail coming out of his mailbox. He about must hate it. us, and he'd also have the dealers on he the must half hate the whole us. Bit. Yeah. 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 hate us so mm. much. But 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 the other thing, um, I think a lot of people would be surprised about how well. Like an electric motor will actually assist with towing, so oh. it might not be doom, well, doomsday. Look, you know, it might, it might um, our our friend here, John, is if they go that way, he's he's not happy, and he for one is departing the brand. Well, John's a real buyer. He's a yep. he's, a yeah. he's an owner, yeah. so, and yeah. I, I don't do not believe John's alone. Um, I mean, I, I don't necessarily agree with him, but yep. there'd be a lot of people out there feeling exactly the same way. Time one of tell. them, one of them is Hammer Rocks. Oh, okay, Hammer. so Hammer, Hammer has come at us big again. Can. Considering we, Australia, are the Land Cruiser's number one market in the world, Mm. we should have a say on what engines are offered in our market. And right now, V8 diesels are still king. So come on, Toyota Australia. Get cracking and flex some muscles. If they end up not offering a V8 diesel option, I think this will make the 200 series more desirable in the used car market and a future classic. (laughs) Um, just as the 80 series with the 1HD FT engine is now becoming. Well, wasn't there some suggestion that they might keep something like the 200 series going as a 70 series so you've yeah. got the new one with the hybrid stuff and whatever yeah. and and for people who are able to be sold on that that's yeah. what they can buy but they'll keep the old one going yep. maybe kill off the 70 well, series I mean, yeah. you to your point series, tom yeah. that four and a half liter v8 in the 70 series they put piazzo piezo you know yep. uh tricky injectors yep. in the engine went to great lengths to make it more compliant and fuel efficient and cleaner and what have you that investment has to be amortised over a, yeah, a period absolutely. of time, you'd think. I, so, I reckon as well that the uh, resale value of your 200 series has mm. probably also gone up. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Maybe. All right, now, our friend from the other side of the world, Dakuk. Oh, Dakuk. <laughs> which he doesn't like being yeah, he called, does, doesn't like but Richard persists in doing it. it. Yeah. Um, he went to comments at carsguide.com.au and left us a recorded message, which we often encourage people to do. Ooh. So thank you very much, and let's go to that now. Good day, gentlemen. This is the cook, still streaming from Frankfurt, but I'm coming to Sydney in the last days of March. Thanks a lot for inviting me to join you in the famous shed. 
If you wanted to do like a Throwback Friday episode, for example, on the first comments on the Frankfurt Motor Show 2017 in the first episode, I'm happy to join you and share my thoughts. Have a great weekend. Cheers, guys. So he's suggesting a throwback segment. That's amazing. Where we actually check on in on what we said oh. back what? in the day. So what? he's saying, look, he's he's gone calling back and, ourselves out on the facts. Well, he's gone back and watched a few of the the earlier episodes of the podcast. He says some predictions are accurate. You know, Holden mm. uh, for the um, chop, as he mentioned in the message to us, while others have missed the mark. <laughs> Uh, in Fra- at the Frankfurt show just after it, we said the Honda E and Kia Proceed would never make it to production. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, okay. Um, you got us dead to rights on that. That's true. We'll That's have true. a think about that. Look, look uh, the Honda E made it to production, but we're not getting we're it. That's right. So it hurts as bad. We, 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 yeah, we've we got a bit both ways yeah. there. Yeah. Yes. It, we may as you know not exist at all, though. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so disappointing. So Australia yeah. being such a prime market for the world. Vehicles, yeah. Yeah. Ben Williams says, <laughs> there's always one person wearing their headphones the wrong way. Okay. Now, oh, is no, it's no, me. We're all fine. No, you're right. I'm we're right. We're all correct. Are you right? Oh, there we are. It's okay. But yes. it was, last time around, it was Mal. Okay. So Mal came back with a response to Ben and said, Ben, I am impressed and embarrassed at the same time. <laughs> Fortunately, James and Chesto sound the same regardless of which way you put them on. And we're hardly recording Bohemian Rhapsody here. Cheers, Mal Flynn. <laughs> so he was caught out and mm. manned up and came back with that response, which was good. Which way are they supposed to go? The the cord on the left. It has an L and an R written on it, which I promptly ignore every time I put the headphones on. But oh, yeah. Why don't you yeah. just put one on the forehead and one on the back? That's like that. the go. There you oh, are. Oh, that's both ways. been doing it wrong the whole time. Okay, stop okay. that. that that's much um, better. <laughs> <laughs> now, we've had comment from TGV, which I presume is a French fast train, who just <laughs> is commenting um, Thomas the Tank Engine style. Yeah. yeah. And yep. a V8 Ranger Raptor is not needed. The 2.3 litre turbo four cylinder in Mustang performance tune, 236 kilowatts, 448 newton meters, would be a far better option and could be done on the actual production line. And a six speed manual could easily also be offered. In the Raptor, a petrol engine. Yeah. What? This is what he's suggesting. But no. doesn't, doesn't it have that engine in the US? Just wait. Just, okay. Just right. wait yeah. right there, Tom. <laughs> Hold on, Tom. Ford would have to do validation work for Australian market, but it would be a far better option than the third party V8 option that can come with the next-gen Ranger. Also, if this is an option, please, Ford, it needs a larger fuel tank, mm. as 80 mm. litres won't be enough. Minimum 100-litre fuel tank, quite. I think that is a bit of an off-the-wall suggestion, to put a four-cylinder petrol yeah. um, into the Ranger Raptor. Mm. People won't buy it. Because I think from an image point of view, and just from a, a kind of gut instinct, emotional point of view, mm. a, V8 in that, a V8 in that car, irrespective of its specs and performance, it's just... Something that I reckon would sell. Oh, although, although how much of a Ford thing would it be to put the V8 in and then not make the fuel tank bigger? I mean, how many <laughs> of us have we've all driven Valkins? Yeah, we've all driven Mustangs. Yep. Yeah. and going, oh no, I have to refuel every two hundred kilometres. Yeah. It's so it's a yeah. good, it's a very good comment on the fuel Price tank. You have to yeah. pay. Look, you brought up another interesting thing. You know, like that train knows a lot for about right. cars. Very good. But have you seen those high tech? <laughs> have you seen those drawings of what? Of Thomas the Tank Engine and the trains from Thomas the Tank Engine, how you know how they have a face at the front on the oh, front yeah. of the tank. Well, yeah. yeah, well, actually, there's a like the an X-ray diagram, and maybe we might be able to get it up behind us of what it is. It's actually a man lying inside it with his face. <laughs> yeah, or right? someone crouched like yeah. a cat wow. it's in their stuff face. Of yeah. Nightmares. That yeah. would make your neck sore if you're having to lie like that and have your face out the front of the train. <laughs> yeah, that's really awkward. It's terrifying. Yeah. Um, now, mm. Glenn, Glenn Corey says. Talk about the Commodore future. Say, the Cadillac CTS replacing it. <laughs> um, now, what I would say to that is, the Cadillac CTS is a rear-wheel drive, large sedan. Hmm. It's got different engine options. I think Holden um, has experienced great pain trying to continue selling a large sedan yep. in this market. Hmm. So I don't think it's a matter of replacement. I think it's a matter of reorganization of right. the model lineup. And yeah, no replacement. We've for done Ryan, I would say. about exactly. two entire episodes dedicated to exactly. that exact concept. Exactly. So speaking of watching back catalog oh, episodes, yeah, yeah. yeah go, go and watch one we've chatted Absolutely. about it at length. In 2009, Holden sold 55,000 Commodores. In 2019, they sold 5,000. Wow. It's nothing to do with statistic. the car not being any good. Yeah. Um, yeah. That Opel Insignia was a very good car, right? It's changing tastes. It's changing yeah. tastes. Changing lifestyles, exactly changing right. tastes, the whole yep. bit. Now, finally, Cam X Mile says, P 
pathetic green screen. Uh, <laughs> just this <laughs> this myth. It's not a this green screen. This myth that won't die. <laughs> this is I'm, a shed. What even, green screen? Even, what do you mean? Even producer Pritchard just burst out uh, laughing the, at that one. At we are in the shed. Yeah. I wish this would look just this. go away. How dare uh, you? All right. Totally. Green screen. Now, to the... Um, There's a to calendar the, behind you. To the sub- subject for today, yep. um, we're going to talk about... Hyundai Ute. Now, Ooh. those two words together really fire up people's imagination. And uh, our own Matt Campbell ran a news story on carsguide.com.au through the week where he had actually been in Korea uh, at a Genesis launch. Mm. So the new uh, large SUV, uh, the GV80, uh, luxury SUV. Now, it's powered by a turbo diesel engine. And his, the, the, the cogs in his mind started whirring around, and he said, well, wow, why couldn't that find its way into mm. a ute? Now, as, as some background context, mm. in 2015, Hyundai created the Santa Cruz concept, which was that very lifestyle-y ute-style thing, and it will have its own path in America. It, so it, it not basically in, looks like a Tucson with a tray. That's yeah. right. The, so, the Santa Cruz, it's a surf buggy. It's going to be, yeah. Yeah. yes, yeah. yes, that's right. Mm. It'll Put be a different kind of vehicle, whereas there. a more hard core working truck um, is also on the cards mm. and um, so it's an inline six cylinder diesel. Now he caught out mm. Albert Bierman who's their head of development for Hyundai I think formerly of BMW That's he right. was, he was BMW head of M Division yep. yeah. uh, He said oh with this engine we can have so many applications mm. as you know we make commercial vehicles and so on so this engine will be out there for quite some time you don't need to worry about that engine said Mr. Beerman. <laughs> then he kind of realised what he'd said. Uh, he then seemingly stepped back from that sort of commitment, stating that, quote, we have not finally decided yet if the engine will transcend brand boundaries in the Hyundai family. But Matt's saying it will. Yeah. It will happen. Yeah. It's Absolutely. got to. It's a great engine too. Yeah. yeah. Um, 206 kilowatts, almost 600 newt metres. That's more than the Volkswagen Amarok. Yeah. It's more than the Mercedes X-Class. Correct. Um, and even opens up room for a you know, Ranger Raptor rival yes. type and, of thing and, as well. And, and how exciting is it to see straight six engines just reappearing? Amazing. Everywhere. Straight, straight six from is the a, way to go. Yeah. From a packaging point of view, traditionally, mm. they've been a challenge because yeah. it's mm. just the length of the engine and also their, their height at times. Mm. So, yeah, really a breakthrough and to pe- get it. People that know about engines as well, um, V6 is a little bit off balance and straight sixes are almost perfectly balanced. Yeah, yeah. generally yeah, yeah. regarded as the ideal mm. in terms yeah. of natural balance yeah. in a combustion engine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so s- smooth, refined. Oh. And, and Matt was saying, so I, I, I went and read his uh, GV80 review and, it, of course, in Korea, the only engine they had access to was this new engine, mm. and he was saying it was smooth and quiet and right. definitely not short on power and something as heavy as the G80, yeah. which the GV80, which is massive. Yes. Um, so that's very exciting. And, and we've previously reported that work has begun yeah. on the Hyundai Ute. It's not as if it's a theoretical thing. And, and with those power figures as well, like we all know that the Amarok V6 is a monster. It's f- it's so much fun to be behind the wheel of, and if this can even replicate. You know, ninety percent of that or eighty mm. percent of that, mm. it'll be a great, great thing. It, look, I I th- thought maybe last year or the year before Hyundai was sort of reaching its its peak. You know, the yeah. i thirty had you know conquered the world in a lot of ways. Um, you know, the Santa Fe it was. It, I thought this is it. But I, I if they get that Ute out with that yep. engine and all the other different things that can spin off that along with the Genesis brand, I think yeah, I another think massive burst. Another of Another massive burst, and also. I mean, don't, not forgetting that Kia is part of the same family group. Yeah. I mean, that could spin off into commercial vehicles for Kia as well, a Kia Ute. Yep. Well, wow. I mean, when you yeah. think about um, the Telluride mm. with Kia That's and it. the Palisade That's with it. Hyundai, yep. the, the, the vibe of the thing is yep. really a, a Palisade modified to become yeah. a Ute. Um, and Which would look with, great. Correct. Yeah. And with Kia, it's a similar kind of uh, proposition. Take the underpinnings and maybe some yeah. of the architecture of yeah. the Telluride and create a ute from that. And here, here's another prediction for you. <laughs> now, now, maybe Dekul K can... Or, sorry, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Stick to your guns, Richard. <laughs> call him I'm what you call want to call him. I like that. It, it's I'm a sorry. cool rapper name it's in Australia. It's very Australian to yeah. give, you, give someone a nickname they don't like, sure, isn't it? Sure, it is. Um, look, another, another prediction for you, which may be in about a year or two's time or three years or four years, possibly five, see if it comes true. Maybe six. Um, maybe six, <laughs> maybe a decade. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say 20 years. Um, Maybe never. I think, and it's it's very difficult to th- see Toyota being knocked off the top spot, but I reckon between them, Hyundai and Kia, we could be looking at a very massive threat to Toyota. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Because I don't think, I mean, say for the Mirai and things that are coming out of Toyota land, I don't think that 
they're on the front foot anymore. Yeah, um, Toyota's yeah. playing it too safe in a lot of mm, ways, which yeah. I'll, I'll touch on a little bit later. Um, mm. Because there are really there are some interesting things going on with Toyota, but then they say, oh, but they're not we're hungry. not going to export it. And the other know? the other side of the coin is the kind of wholesale adoption, mm. borderline embrace yeah. of Hyundai as a brand. Yeah, you, you know well, that, yeah. that 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 uh, the research that um, we've been running, Carl Scott, that's a whole mm. other story, mm. shows that younger buyers particularly are saying, yeah, look, Toyota, Mazda, Hyundai, it's like, what, 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 yeah. what's the diff? Yeah. They're Pe- all good cars, they're all good people brands. People my age no and problem. younger as well, yeah. they would have almost certainly known someone or maybe owned themselves an XL as a P-plater. Oh. They've had, you know, it, look, sure, it was a ter- not necessarily the greatest car, but... <laughs> you were going to um, say something else then. Uh, yeah, it was. Not necessarily the greatest <laughs> car, but they had a good experience, and then they went and bought a first-gen i30, sure. maybe, and they had another great experience, and then they've gone, oh, maybe I'll just get yeah. it. And now they're at the point where they're, they're getting leases, and they say, oh, maybe I'll get a lease on a two-side. And I think or, some, uh, some of those I-30. people are tradies. Yeah. And, yep. and the thing for me that was quite telling was when the IMAX uh, arrived. Oh, the iLoad. I beg your pardon. Yep. iLoad so and the, the IMAX. the one-box you know? yeah. um, van... Mm. Immediate uptake. Yeah. Like, uh, commercial operators were ready yeah. to buy that thing, yeah. and it put High Ace under pressure. Yeah. And now you've got LDV coming in and actually yeah. putting pressure on uh, the I load. Mm. But there is no hesitation. You know, if yeah. they can come up with the right product. If they come up with the right product, they're going to take Toyota out John Wick style. Well, <laughs> That's right. Yes, we were noting through the week yeah. how much Richard has come to resemble. Um, Canoe Reeves yeah, if, in, if, the, in the John Wick franchise. If you're watching on YouTube, please give us some feedback uh, about Richard's new look for 2020. Um, and <laughs> what do you reckon? <laughs> it's the... Oh! oh no. it's, it's because what? he's worth it. Yeah. And yeah, then, yeah. <laughs> then the, um, the other thing worth noting is that Matt's also uh, put it that there are other petrol engines yes. that yes. might make their way into this vehicle. A two and a half litre turbo four, 226 kilowatts. Mm-hmm. A three and a half liter twin turbo V six. So you mm. can imagine some tough mm. truck equivalent of a Raptor or you know one of those um, customized factory customized, mm. if that makes sense. But but these uh, engines, like, I, I think the most important thing is these engines give them scalability globally. So yep. if you say, oh, we're going to make a Ute, and they can say, okay, we'll put the three and a half liter V six in for the US, mm. and for Australia, well, you've got the straight six. You know, yep. so it's kind of a. But imagine a Hyundai Ute with an N badge on it. Yeah, mm. yeah. How good would that yep. be? Absolutely right. And there's even options for hybrids in the future with those engines as well. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh, the speculation. People Ooh. are going to be watching back on this episode yeah. and being like, did they get it right? Yeah. Of if we play. If we play the De Cook game, <laughs> yeah. uh, this could be a telling episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's fantastic. Mm. I think we'll we'll move on to our garage oh. and what has been within its four walls. Oh, actually, it's got five walls. Um, yeah. The, yeah. Why, why limit ourselves to four? <laughs> Richard, you've been in a large vehicle. I have. Of European origin. Tell us all about it. I have been in, and talking of John Wick, if you want to see where all this comes from, um, I was making the video for the V250D uh, Avant Garde, which is a Mercedes van, and the the camera guy goes, you look like John Wick. And I'd never seen the movies before, <laughs> and I've gone, who's that? And he's gone, you know. Yeah. And then Pritchard, our producer, who was also there playing another character in this video, because it's one of my videos and they're a bit odd um, he goes yeah you know John Wick anyway that's where it all came from anyway I shall binge watch to three of them and now I'm waiting for and then this morning we realised you don't know who Jack Reacher I don't, is I do he's from yeah, that so, show and from now that he, TV show yeah now he's got now he's got several movies and TV shows to watch based on that comment <laughs> that's right so Anyway, anyway, the V two <laughs> the V two fifty D Avant Garde that's what I've what's been in my garage that's what I've been road testing um, I love it. Um, it had the AMG line uh, pack on it. Which it's got the Russian oligarch total option. Yeah. Total ticked. Russian oligarch mafia yeah. box yeah. ticked. Yeah. Um, I mean, Mercedes Benz are saying that it also could be a family um, people mover, which it absolutely could be. You would be the coolest family in your <laughs> yeah. suburb, I reckon, and also the most feared family as well. Um, but it would make a superb hire car if you wanted that look. Because it, it's too. black and it's, the rims are black and the jet windows black. are tinted. That's it. The the AMG line pack adds those 19 inch gloss black wheels. It adds the side skirts, the diamond grille, um, the rooftop spoiler, yeah. the front apron, the rear apron. Gun rack. I actually think the V class and the you know those Mercedes Benz van family they're underappreciated by private buyers. Oh yeah, because they're, they're 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 great. 
People have gone to SUVs, yeah. right? Because people movers were daggy back yeah. in the nineties yeah. and eighties. But now SUVs are daggy because yeah. everybody's got one. People mover, the new wagon. Come back to yeah. people movers. I loved it. Those jet black windows, those they, they're impenetrable to the human eye. Those are standard on a Did V. Did you throw a steel ball at them? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, they would probably hold up better than the summer truck. Um, no, those are standard, standard tint right. on the V two fifty D Avant Garde. Yep. So you, that's not part of the AMG line pack. Um, it also adds sports lowered suspension. But they know That's their target amazing. audience, don't totally. they? Totally. Yeah. <laughs> Things I didn't like about it, um, it's got a regular key, right? So you yeah. have to keep oh, putting a really? key in. So I would get into the van, put my seatbelt on, and I'd go, oh, key. And I'd have to do this, yeah, get it yeah, out of my yeah. pocket. Another thing I didn't like about it, no USB ports in in the second or third rows. Cigarette lighter, though. No, that's, that's a surprise, isn't it? And it, it wow. doesn't have Apple CarPlay either, does it? Doesn't it doesn't have Apple CarPlay. Yeah. No cigarette or, lighters? No, it had oh, a cigarette. For a, for a stogie. It, it had, yeah. a, had a cigarette lighter <laughs> oh, okay. in, in the second row. Um, air wow. vents as well. Um, another thing I didn't like, doors. Doors. The front doors didn't seem to open as far as I wanted to. I always felt like I was having to sort of slide out through them. Um, but the fuel economy, excellent. 10.5 litres per 100, and that was like punishing it every single yeah. day. I drove it in sport mode most of the time because and what kind responsive. of engine does it have okay so this is the thing right you know how mercedes benz sort of do this weird thing with their engines they call it a 2.2 liter yes four cylinder turbo diesel but it's only 2136 oh they do a bit of rounding inches. up every now and then yeah yes. yeah 2000, like 6.3 debacle that's yeah. in 2143 cc right which is a 2.1 so we've been look short changed <laughs> some cc's yeah. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't do that to them on the price. <laughs> no, no, that's right. I wanted, I want some money off for these missing yes. cubic centimeters. Or, or, or on the, or on the other end, you know, they'd be like, oh, it'd be a bad look if it was actually twenty-one grand, and they were saying it was twenty-two. Yeah, you know? ah, too true. Talking of money, it does cost a bit of money. It's the most expensive van in that class. Um, ninety three thousand seven hundred ninety nine dollars. Right. That's um a little bit more than the you know, the, the top of the line. I think it's the four fifty TDI Volkswagen Multivan. Yeah. Um, All right. A lot more than a Carnival, and a lot more than. But then, if you go to a GLS, mm. okay, SUV, oh. but the big, it's one hundred and fifty. Absolutely. You know, so you you. You're at a much reduced Although, price. Although, it, it, it's got to be said, it hurts when you're paying that much and you've got a turnkey and no Apple CarPlay. True, and know? no proximity unlocking, but giant boot. One, yeah. of the, one of the things I loved about this car and didn't like about the Toyota Granvia is the Granvia had eight seats as well, but you opened up the tailgate and there was there was, nothing left. There was no boot. Yeah. Um, there was nothing there. Right. Uh, but this, I thought you were going to say you opened up the tailgate and just shove a few more people in. <laughs> well, like sideways no, across you, the well, back. You, Standing you, seats. You could, <laughs> yes, you could, you could in the, um, the, the, the bends. Right. Right. Open up the tailgate and you've got, I think it's 1,030 litres of boot space there. It's got a shelf. And if you open up the shelf, inside the shelf are these luggage crates. Oh, not uh, grocery crates. Oh, they're, they're grocery crates. Grocery they're crates. They're not yeah. for, you know, transporting other things. No, yeah. no, not, okay. no not body parts or anything yeah. like that. Um, so, <laughs> what, loved it. Um, yeah, so... look. Easy to drive, like fun to drive. the idea of standing seats now. You can, you can have a yeah. three-class interior, you know. You've got business, economy, and then you've got, like, economy room. express. I, you know they're trying yeah. to bring that in on some yeah, budget no, airlines. Like horrible. Would you, you have to have a red zone, don't stand here? <laughs> Would you stand up on a plane? No. But what if it was cheap? You know uh, what the irony well, is? Just you wouldn't, on, is you w- the plane in the air or yeah. is it just on the ground? <laughs> no, like, not like a stunt man on the wing. <laughs> but like, you know, you know how Ryanair and a few of those budget, other budget airlines around uh, the world I, are bringing out standing seats? Well, I've seen enough of those, um, you know, viral clips where a plane's lost a lot of altitude very quickly yeah. and people have headbutted the <laughs> yeah. lockers. I don't want to be standing no, but you have a thing plane. which comes down over you. Just a like noose. a like an amusement park ride. Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. So the, okay. the patents are out already for these things because if you can get an extra, you can fit another would fifty I, people. Would I have in. to stand in the aisle while other people are sitting <laughs> yeah, by the side, holding onto a thing? <laughs> uh, of course, the, of course. The irony is, you know, you you, you look at a budget airline and go, oh god. I wouldn't want to pay to stand on that. But then, you know, you get business class on an A380 and, and it's pitched as a plus that you get to stand yeah. in the bar. Well, look, yeah, if, that's true. That's yeah. a good point. If if it was a one-hour flight... To Brisbane or from Sydney and it, or Melbourne. And it halved yeah. the price? Yeah. Uh, I'd think about it. Absolutely. You'd yeah. stand... People stand... For an hour. Yeah. People yeah. stand on the train for an hour to get to work. Sure. Tell us, people out there, tell us, would you stand on a plane for an hour? In an amusement yeah. ride. Tell us train. in the... Yes. Yeah. Holding in an amusement you in place. Right. you get a Have drink. A, you'd, <laughs> that's right. you get a tube drops down. <laughs> Something like that. We're going to have to start Aviation Guide. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Now, thank you very much for that, Richard. No worries. Uh, Tom. Yes. You've been in the Cars Guide garage, but it's an annex thereof. Yes. Uh, a little bit to the north and west 
in Japan. Yes. Tell us about some of the highlights of your automotive journey there. Well, this is my attempt to make a uh, an actual holiday into a working holiday oh, yeah. um, by uh, obsessively looking over all the cars. It's Great. hard not to do That's when you're a bit of a car that enthusiast and you go to Planet Japan and you yep. see all the wily you know, and wonderful wait, stuff there. Is this a tax rot? Or is this... <laughs> no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. It's no. not. I wish I was that smart, Richard. Um, uh, but no, so uh, one of the most interesting things when you go over there is seeing car trends because they change really quickly. It's completely different from the last time I went there, which was a few years ago. Yep. And um, it's also completely different from most of the rest of the world, especially Australia, because mm. um, just the cars that are sold there are, are totally different for a variety of reasons. One of them being tax, the other being taste, all, all the rest of it. Um, and space, you know, yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Now, we wrote a story a little while ago uh, talking about the Toyota uh, Rise or Toyota Raze. I'm not really sure how to all say right. it. But it's, yep. it's a small SUV uh, like the uh, Hyundai Venue. Um, right. Very similar uh, dimensionally and even in the look. And uh, it looks kind of like a shrunken down RAV4. And I've got to say, it looks better in real life than it does in the pictures. Terrific. Um, I saw this thing uh, on the streets in quite a few places. But also, um, if you're in Tokyo, something worth visiting is, is Toyota have this always-on expo where they've they've literally got all their current models and you can get in and out of them and press all the buttons. And yep. It's awesome. It's in a Daiba in Tokyo. So if you're in Tokyo and yep. you're a motoring enthusiast and you want to see something really cool, mm-hmm. go and look at that because yep. um, you can see all sorts of stuff we don't get here. But anyway, uh, the Ray's Toyota, Toyota's, um, when we did that story, we asked Toyota, will it come here? It seems like a logical competitor for um, uh, Hyundai's Those Venue. Cars. Yeah, um, but they've just said, mm, nah, right. which is surprising. I, and because I sat in it and thought, this would be great in Australia. People yes. would buy this 100%. Um, it, it's a bit Spartan um, because yep. it is an entry-level car, but still um, I think it might be a price thing and not wanting to compete with the Yaris. I see. Um, because yeah. it is quite expensive. Yeah. If you do the conversion um, from yen to Australian dollars for an entry-level one, it's still $24,000, and that's not including I all see. the cost of getting it to Australia. So that's a pricey car in the Japanese market. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and it is and it is a bit Spartan in the back seat and the boot. Like There's bits of the bits of like sheer metal you I can see and stuff. I wonder what makes it so expensive then. I don't know. It's a good question. Yeah. Um, and, the, and you never know what's lurking, you know, behind the scenes in terms of, um, um, what do you call it, certification for yep. particular powertrains yep. and, and all of that, Definitely. safety and, and things like that, Australian design rules. And yeah. and also, it's one of those things of, uh, like, uh, the uh, Japanese tax bracket engines. So, um, yep. it's, it's available with, uh, from what I can tell, a single engine option. And uh, it's not very powerful. Mm. Uh, you, you get 72 kilowatts and 140 newton meters. Right. Which is... Does it have wow. a rotating blade, like a horizontally rotating blade underneath it? And can you lower the suspension? <laughs> yes, it is a little bit lawnmower-esque. <laughs> right. um, it's very true. But anyway, so... That, but a catcher on the back. And you can, yeah, yeah, the options, the accessories list yeah, is yeah. a massive catcher. catcher. Yeah. 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 So anyway, that, it's, it, it was an interesting thing to look at and think, God, this is so suited for our market and we're just not going to get it. And I think it speaks to that kind of uh, conservative right. bent to Toyota. Did you see two of my favourite Japanese-only cars? And that is, when I was in Japan last, I walked past a Toyota dealership and inside, on the the main dial, on the main stand, was a Toyota tank. A Toyota, yeah. Toyota yeah, yeah, tank. Yeah. And this is the tiniest little car ever. They look like a cube, really, like yep. a Nissan cube. But they are so cute. It's just like a... Square with yep. a bonnet, yes. and it's got um, this kind of mean little badge on it. It's yes, yes, but it's just the most innocuous looking box. Yeah. So the yeah. whole retail landscape mm. in cars in Japan is so brilliantly baffling. Yes, mm. you know that there are different brands. Toyota has Toyo Pet, yeah. and then it has Toyota, yep. and on and yeah. on it goes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's so wonderfully confusing. Yeah. And on to the next one. Yes, it, it actually yeah. runs quite well into the next one, okay. which is the uh, Honda N Box. And Matt. While I was away, wrote this story on the Honda N Box saying that um, you, you won't believe how many of these things they sell. So just in the Japanese domestic market, they've sold two hundred and fifty-three thousand five hundred units. N Box. What period of, of the time? Honda N Box in, uh, in twenty nineteen. Okay, because if um, you said that was in a week, yeah. that's a lot of cars. Yeah. No. So in all of twenty nineteen, but still, if you think ah. about it, the best-selling car in Australia is the Hilux, and what, you know they sold what fifty thousand of them or something. So mm. it's yeah. you know um, quite crazy that uh, that's sold easily five times it, as much. It's reflective of such a fundamentally different mindset. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's such an urbanized country yeah. that those very small cars, power isn't a big deal, highway cruising, I don't know, not a lot of towing, 
that just makes a lot of sense for tight streets yep. and Absolutely. the environment that it's aimed at. Also, one of the things I noticed when I was there is that there was a lot of people in these cars. So they're mini people movers. Yeah, so right. you'd look mm-hmm. over mm-hmm. in the traffic and there'd be a whole family of six people sitting in Toyota a car tanks the, same the size thing. of this table. Yeah. Hiding their face from you <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. While, you were, yes. while you were creepily staring Strange at Strange like foreigner, you know. <laughs> Gaijin. Gaijin. Yeah, Gaijin. 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 Yeah. What um, the heck? Uh, but anyway, so the N-Box, uh, <clears throat> definitely not suited for our market. I can understand why uh, 43 kilowatts, 65 new meters, that's not much. That would get laughed um, at yeah, on the get, road. Yeah, we would get laughed yeah. out of town. Mm. Imagine imagine actually putting five people in that imagine and trying to Imagine actually trying to mow a lawn with that. <laughs> yeah, going out the Pacific the, Highway. The major clumps underneath the trees would probably... Make Honestly. it, you know, store. But the thing that struck me is these things are everywhere. And I, yeah. I did a fair bit of traveling around the, you know, entire area of Japan. We were in yep. Hokkaido for 10 days and then we were in Tokyo for another week. And these end boxes, everywhere you look, there's one sitting in driveways, there's one sitting and in traffic. And did you see there's any two everywhere. that were the same? Uh, basically, no. They yeah. sell, they sell so many options. Yeah. 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 Chrome, uh, two-tone roof, yes. uh, different wheels. Um, they, they, they are... They were cool to look at. Yeah, did you right. see any centuries? I did. And yes. this gets me onto my next topic really well because right. in Japan, people still love the sedan. It's yeah. still an aspirational yeah. product. Yeah. People still love to own it. Yeah. And the one that um, stood out to me, yes, there's the Century. They had it, I at, love the, the century. They had it yep. at the Toyota yep. Expo and it's kind of this handcrafted. It's a V8 now. Yeah. It used to be a V12. Yeah, it used to be a V12. Yeah. It was the only V12 Toyota ever made. Yeah. Um, and it costs something like something like $700,000 or something. It, it's hugely expensive, but it does look amazing. Right. It looks like a... Oh, no, just, when you see one, when yes. you see it shining in shining black on the side of a Tokyo road, it looks like it's the future and the past all right. at the same yes. time. But it's, it's incredible. It should have like a super cruiser hanger on the back, yeah. so you can just yeah. have an inbox on yeah. like your little yeah. tender. <laughs> yeah. That's a day of trip. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but no, no, hugely expensive. They do have one at the um, Toyota Expo, which you can look at. But they, it's the only car with a little picket fence around it that you can't there. touch. Oh, really? Yeah. Which was, you know, oh, heartbreaking. But um, I, and I actually saw in the centre of Tokyo um, two ones okay. driving around yeah. which I didn't think I'd get to see because maybe you think maybe it was oh, the it's uh, really Tokyo rare. Century Club yeah, yeah they maybe. just had them it was two cars yeah and, just, <laughs> and, and they only sell it in one colour I think it only comes in black and uh, like a cream white I think those are the only two yeah. colours they sell it in yeah, yeah. Um, so um, anyway and uh, um, lastly really surprising to see so many Toyota Crown Royal Saloons. They oh, still sell them. They're yeah. up to their 15th generation now. As taxis? Now. No, no, not even as taxis. They All had right. a few as taxis, but obviously you can still get the old Comfort from the 90s and the Royal Saloon, which is the same mm-hmm. car, just a bit longer. And they've got the new one, the Japan Taxi. Oh, yes. Um, yes, yes, yes. Which is basically a Prius, but it rides beautifully. I got to ride in one. I want to ask when, I mean, Mal Flynn would know this because I'm sure he's got a Toyota Crown, like, Duna cover. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, oh, matching, Jammies. matching pillow. <laughs> Cases in Jami. <laughs> yeah. What generation was the last crown in Australia? Oh, that would oh, have been long like ago. 79 or 80? It'd early have 80s? to be early 80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not even yeah. going to anyway, look now. Let's anyway, let's leave it to our listeners and uh, viewers. Yeah, call us that. out. Call us out. But uh, So they're up to the 15th generation now. It's now, I don't think it's any longer sharing its platform with uh, what was the Lexus GS. It's mm. actually on. Um, it's actually on the TNGA, its own version of TNGA oh, fantastic. now. fantastic. It yeah. looks sporty and cool and fantastic and it, it's got this long wheelbase and it's this amazing looking car so if you, you're really into sedans go check out the 15th generation Toyota Crown they 15th sell it generation. 15th fantastic. generation they still sell it. there's heaps of them in Tokyo they still sell it um, with uh, three engine options you got uh, it's rear wheel drive as well this That's sounds the other like important. a sales spill <laughs> there's heaps, there are heaps of options there's yeah. three yeah. engines yeah. I'd Getting love to quick. have one I'd love how, to much, have one. how much is paint I don't know how much paint <laughs> what about paint protection what about, yeah, can yeah, I get exactly. the upholstery <laughs> protection as well sure what about a bonnet protector? But but you know, it, I want one of those boot top f- luggage racks. Can yeah, get one of those. It, look, yes. if you're if and it's a motoring enthusiast thing to still love sedans so much. But you know, if right. you do, Japan's just a total playland, and right. and you see all these awesome vehicles around. You know, stuff that would never sell in Australia anymore, and it now, breaks your heart. Tom, I love we're going to put a lid on you now. You got to put a lid We have on to it. we have to stop that chat. <laughs> but that was fantastic. Thank you very much. I felt like I was there. I did too. Um, yeah. The uh, I'll just chip in quickly with a Land Rover Discovery Sport P two hundred S. So it's edging up to. Towards the upper echelon of mm. the, um, the disco sport range, 
So sixty odd thousand dollars before you put it on the road. It's got the two litre turbo, the Ingenium petrol engine, um, nine speed auto, and I found it really comfy. It mm. runs on eighteen inch rims, and that was the overwhelming or overriding impression was how yeah. comfortable is this car? They've done a great job in just refining the suspension and, and making it uh, ride really nicely. It's it's a bit of a puzzling car too because um, they it looks like they've only just given it a little nip and tuck, but they've actually changed the chassis Quite underneath a bit in, and done inside as well. A lot of it work. It feels quite yeah. posh inside yeah. now. Um, yeah. Which is good. On the on that same vein of Range Rover, did you uh, see the footage of the Queen driving her Rangey the other day? Really, one of the most gangster things you'll ever <laughs> no. see. She's about just high over the steering wheel. It wasn't Prince she Philip. She would be upside down in seconds. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, she right. just pulled up at the lights, flashed this look at the paparazzi light, and it was a look to kill. And then just burned. Did she have her corner. arm out over the over the door, no. like at the window? But one of the things they with a, with a, a, a sneaky yeah. durry out the corner of her mouth. <laughs> one of the things that the royal family do, and I don't know whether this is a code sign or something, they put the window down but only by about that much. Ah. And I don't know why, what that is, what right. that means or what that does. If Maybe you're knows, reading into it, let Richard. Us know. <laughs> Might just be, stop it from, you know. I've got to say, though, that that, that Discovery Sport's probably my favourite Land Rover at the moment. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. good on you. And I th- just to chip in also, I thought the steering was very nice. It yeah. was a, a nicely balanced car and pleasurable to drive. Yeah. So good, good, there's that. Good car. Um, now, speaking of pleasure, it's time for Musk Watch. Cool. So, mm. uh, two names that sort of uh, orbit together, Musk mm. and Trump. Oh, so, on CNBC, mm. thank you for this. Trump says Elon Musk is like Thomas Edison. He's one of our great geniuses. So, that's one genius to another, quite obviously. Yep. Yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, Stable. Sp- Stable. Speaking Stable. of Stable. CNBC Stable. from the World Economic Forum in Davos, which happened in the, in the week preceding this podcast... Trump said, well, you have to give him credit. I spoke to him very recently, and he's also doing the rockets. He likes rockets, and he does good at rockets too, by the way. I never saw where the engines came down with no wings, no anything, and they're landing. I said, I've never seen that before. Oh, God. That is the President of the United States. What he then said, is wrong he followed this man? up with, and I was worried about him because he's one of our great geniuses, and we have to protect our geniuses. You know, we have to protect Thomas Edison. And we have to protect all of these people that came up with, originally, the light bulb and the wheel and all these things. <laughs> Thomas and Edison, he's one no, of our no very smart it. people and we want, to, we want to cherish those people. Because Thomas pre- Edison's known for his yeah. invention of the wheel. We've got to protect yeah. that wheel guy. We've got to yeah. cherish him. He died close to 100 years ago. Yeah. Um, the person who invented yeah. the wheel, wheel wasn't actually American. No, yeah. uh, uh, probably wasn't even a man. I think really. we're talking it would, Mesopotamia. Been... You're, you're, yes, you're going to get talk... sued, JC. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, that's very important. But he's done a very good job. Shockingly, how well you know how <laughs> it comes so fast. I mean, you go back a year. This is true. And they were talking about the end of the company, and now all of a sudden they're talking about these great things. He's going to be building a very big plant in the United States. That's a dubious claim. Mm. Uh, he has to because we help him, so he has to help oh, us. Oh, man. He that, can't help himself, that, can he? That is so, that's, he's going to be building a very big that's, plant. That's, we help him, so he helps that's us. That's a quid pro quo <laughs> right yeah, there. Um, so also interesting to note that in 2017, not long after Trump he had mm. taken office as president, uh, Elon took a selected reverse on the Economic Advisory Council that uh, yeah. Donald Trump had put together. So they have a bit of... That was because of, of Donald hate. Trump's um, determination to withdraw from the Paris Agreement. Yep. And Elon yep. Musk just said, nah, I'm out. So interesting that he's now saying he's a genius. It's interesting. I saw Joe Rogan uh, interviewing Elon in that famous weed-smoking episode. And yep. um, he's asked outright, you know, what do you think of Donald Trump? And he answered very carefully. He said, oh, I... I don't agree with all his policies, um, but um, right. he's supportive. But, okay. Um, he was very careful with how he... Yeah, well, well, you, you would be if you're a business mogul, wouldn't you? It could turn really? into a, a bromance and a love in with uh, uh, all of that hitting just, Elon's I mean, way. If there's if any doubt in your mind whether Trump reads from a script, you know, that really no. completely... <laughs> Who writes that? that question. No, no one's going to write Look, that. With all the rockets, I, I without the wings. He does good at rockets, does good he, at does, rockets. he does good at rockets. I can see why this is the everyman's president, you know. He's, wow. He, maybe I could be president. Yeah. Because, You're you too know, smart. Yeah, but, like, I can speak. I can does good you at words. You don't want to be president, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> That's a poison chalice. What, is it? what do they say? 
anyone that wants to be president shouldn't be president. president. Yeah, great yeah, point. That's great point. That's true. Now that old stomping ground Twitter, oh. and uh, lots of good things being uh, publicised. Elon's gone off on Twitter. The Crew Dragon separating from the Falcon Nine, and that's to carry astronauts in case there's some kind of catastrophic mm. event. And that test went very well. Yep. So next stop is actually a manned flight. Blah blah blah. So all that good stuff. But then he comes up with a meme which is of uh, illustrations of dinosaurs. Yes. And it says, in every artist's depiction of a meteor that caused the extinction of the dinosaurs, there's always one T-Rex looking up at it like, yeah. that can't be good. <laughs> always. <laughs> just, just a great, great meme. That's it there. And in response, so in response, we've had a gif of Barney beating up a dinosaur or person yes. a dinosaur I do in like Manhattan. That one. Yes. Very um, America, that one. And Chris Weaver came back with, not this one, and there's a person in a dinosaur suit doing the pole dancing, which people on YouTube will be able to see right I, behind us. I want to know, like, I'm impressed that they've got a pole in the middle of their lounge room. room. Yeah. Well, I think there's a bit of a fitness connection there that yes. pole dancing yes. went from certain gentlemen's establishments to yep. the living room yep. as a fitness thing. But with gen gentlemen actually on the pole. Oh, well, dinosaurs yeah. in this case. Right, yeah. And I do yeah. like the very dainty raised foot at the end of this <laughs> uh, particular routine. And the way that the, the suit has the head flop yeah. backwards slightly. Well, it's all about the finish. <laughs> it's great. It's, it's right. great. Mm. Um, Nick mm. Venture then came in and said, and another one says, who says, I've got to get out of here in my raft, which is just this <laughs> yes. amazing, brilliant front flip. But Thomas Purdy That's says, best. yeah, he still didn't make it to the Ark, uh, which is a fair comment. <laughs> that, that, that front flip into the, into oh, the life in the raft is brilliant. amazing. And if people who yeah, are watching yeah. on uh, YouTube could mm. hear the audio, there's just this very light <laughs> clap true, of though. applause. Isn't that true, though? Like Every single one of those dinosaurs, and the books from the 70s and 80s and 90s had it for those illustrated this, diagrams yeah, of, the, just, of the, of the meteor, meteorite sort of coming across the sky and the, and the T-Rex going, Oh, yeah. that looks bad. <laughs> yeah, Exactly. It's such a good observation. Now, the other thing to talk about is compensation. So what, business, for the meteorite? Business insider. Yeah, for the, and the dinosaurs. <laughs> for the T-Rex, yeah. The remaining dinosaurs are seeking a class <laughs> action <laughs> to, to recover compensation for their extinction. Some wondering whether seagulls do actually classify as dinosaurs. Um, well, Tesla's stock yeah, just closed above $100 billion market capitalization for the first time on Wednesday. Wow. And that starts the clock on Elon Musk receiving the first tier of a potentially massive payday. Right, so if the company's stock price stays high enough to maintain that valuation for six months, he'll unlock stock options that could net him for $346 million. That payout would be just the first of 12 tranches of stock options that could be worth $55 billion what? if the company's hyper-ambitious goals are achieved in the next few years. Yeah, he's going to be the next Bezos, isn't he? It's amazing. No way. Yeah. Yep. So that's what's Where's in prospect. Where's all this money coming from? Uh, just... Money, banks, yeah, Wall Street bets, accounts, ATMs. They they cough out a lot of money. <laughs> I don't they get, do. I don't yeah. understand. I, I once knew money. an ATM. I don't get <laughs> so that leads us to the share price, which this week is five five hundred and seventy two dollars and twenty cents, and it was five hundred and eighteen last week. So we're talking a sixty odd dollar, you know, a fifty odd dollar increase. Mm. As BBC reports, Tesla has displaced, this happened overnight, mm. Volkswagen as the world's second most valuable car maker. Whoa! After a dramatic rise in share price, pushed its market value to more than $100 billion. You've, you've got to look at this on the balance of how many cars they actually output yeah. compared to their... It's so inflated. It, it feels like a bubble. It's so inflated. It does inflated. feel like a bubble. Anyway, if you were a real car maker, you would be really pissed off. Yep. Tesla's already worth more than GM and Ford yep. put together. Yep. What? As How a, as is a market capitalisation. Yeah. But that's based on just hype alone. Yeah. Hype alone. The, oh, well, they sell some cars. I suppose yeah. there's a few out there. <laughs> um, I Tesla's once saw a Model 3. <laughs> yeah. Did you? I saw a Model 3 the other day. So yeah. that share wow, price like has... Wow, a privately owned one. Yeah. That's more than double the share price from October last year. Yeah. Um, and shares rose 4% on Wednesday, blah, 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 making its valuation second only to Toyota, Whoa. which is actually valued at $230 mm. billion. So more than double that outrageous $100 billion wow. uh, for Tesla. So isn't that extraordinary? So is now time for another uh, throwback episode prediction that Hyundai will be worth sure. more they're than all, Toyota? They're all available. <laughs> Dakul could be onto it. Look, I would even predict that in two years' time there will be no Tesla. 
Oh. Okay, mark down the date. That's okay, another okay, fearless Richard prediction. <laughs> Two years, no Tesla. Okay, yeah. with that, we've reached the finish line. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. And thank you, Tom. Thank you. And thanks to our principal cinematographer and best boy, Mr. Pritchard, for his behind-the-scenes <laughs> wizardry. Uh, he's in the haute couture camo board shorts with um, oh, yeah. a barbed wire singlet. Yes. And are those fur... Faux for flip flops, you've got on there. Uh, they, look like it. they look like they it. Look like they look like it. Please pass on the word about the podcast and let us know your thoughts by searching for Cars Guide on Facebook and Instagram using the hashtag CG Podcast or email us, as Duck Hook did, mm. at comments at carsguide.com.au. If you're an iTunes listener, please rate and review us. And remember, you can watch us on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. But before we go, remember the tools are all about safety. Make sure your vehicle is in full operational order. For example, night driving with only one headlight isn't very bright. Oh. Ah, because it's only got one. Yeah. 